Okay, so I think it's time to begin. Um, hello and welcome <coughs> to this talk um, about Java E microservices and Wildfly Swarm. Um, my name is uh, my name is Peter Palaga. <coughs> my primary job is um, to be a senior sustaining engineer for JBoss EAP at Red Hat. JBoss EAP uh, is an application server. Uh, it's the flavor of Wildfly for which you can buy support from Red Hat. Uh, my relationship to Wildfly Swarm uh, is rather, rather occasional. <laughs> One of those occasions uh, being this presentation. But this presentation, as I was preparing it, I found a couple of issues. Uh, I could fix some of them, and that's why I may call myself a contributor. Um, except for that, um, I'm um, I'm the author of Source Depths. Source Depths uh, is a tool for for building uh, Maven dependencies <coughs> out of their sources uh, at the build time of the dependent uh, artifact. Uh, this is quite new in Java. Uh, other languages like Ruby have it for, for some time. Uh, and this is quite handy if you happen to deliver something, something big, uh, as big as a uh, Java EE server and your code base is divided into several independent uh, code repositories uh, and the components have uh, independence uh, release cycles and uh, with these source dependencies you may uh, you have the option to define your dependencies in terms of uh, git commits rather than releases and uh, in an extreme case you can avoid releases uh, that was about me. Uh, my uh, Twitter handle is uh, at the bottom. Uh, I will post the slides uh, later today, and you can post questions or whatever you want. Uh, they are tweeted to me. Um, today, uh, we'll start with Java EE and microservices uh, very briefly. Uh, then we'll cover Wildfire Swarm basics, uh, its basic concepts, uh, basic use cases. Um, configuration, and uh, then depending de depending on how much time we will have, I'll try to cover uh, a few, a couple of advanced topics such as secure access, uh, service registration and discovery, load balancing, uh, circuit breaking, and API documentation with Swagger. So uh, to warm up, please raise your hand who uh, ever wrote or maintained a Java servlet. And an AGB, EGB. JAXRS endpoint. And the persistence with Hibernate. Great. Uh, Java is a different thing uh, to different people. And because uh, I assume most of us are de developers here, we may uh, adopt that perspective for now. So uh, Java EE may be looked as a set of API specifications uh, such as servlet, EGB, uh, JAXRS, um, uh, transactions, persistence, and so on, uh, that are packaged together and distributed in form on, of uh, application servers. There are several implementations, uh, Wildfly and JBoss EAP being one of them. Uh, there's quite a lot of history, uh, the last part of it uh, being microservices of the last year. We'll come to it later. Uh, there's a few things uh, without uh, which it would be very hard to think uh, about microservices. Uh, in uh, uh, first, uh, continuous integration and continuous delivery uh, which assume that you have a certain automation uh, in your builds uh, and, and uh, deployments, uh, which is also called uh, pipeline. Uh, this pipeline allows you to work with smaller change sets and uh, push them because they are small. Uh, you can push them uh, faster through the pipeline and they reach customers faster. Uh, 
which is good from the business point of view and uh, which is also good to uh, reduce some risks such as uh, it's much easier to fix a smaller change or to uh, revert back to the previous revision than with a, with a huge uh, change set. Um, uh, Linux containers are those small uh, nice things uh, that uh, boot very fast and um, that allow you to, to, to spawn huge number of instances uh, within, within uh, seconds. Uh, they um, uh, tend to be seen as immutable and ephemeral. Uh, if one needs uh, to store persistently something, it needs to be uh, into separate uh, volume. Uh, these uh, immutable and minimalistic uh, images have the, the apparent uh, benefits of uh, fast provisioning, uh, fast boot time, and uh, when done properly, uh, they may be quite small. Uh, and with less code, you have less surface for uh, security problems or uh, whatever kind of bugs. Uh, DevOps culture, um, preferably small teams should take care for, uh, for, for software in its entire life cycle from coding through testing and uh, provisioning, deployment, and monitoring and um, solving all kinds of uh, runtime issues. So when we have these three things uh, in front of our, our eyes, uh, the notion of microservices comes uh, rather from itself. So we want to divide the functionality into reasonably small units uh, that can be handled by small teams and um, we should uh, n not use other than language independence ways of communications uh, between each other. It's very common to use REST or other, other protocols. Uh, when we do the isolation right, uh, we may use uh, distinct languages to uh, implement distinct so microservices, uh, distinct runtime, data stores. Uh, they may have uh, fully independent release cycles and, of course, the teams, uh, as I have said. Uh, why Java, Java EE still matters uh, in this, uh, with this new mindset? There's a couple of good reasons for this. So first, it's robust in nature. It's well understood, uh, mainly in terms of performance and scalability. Uh, it's standards compliant and there's a huge amount of uh, many kinds of integrations available, be it uh, databases, um, messaging, whatever. And, which is very important, uh, there's a huge amount of uh, investment investments being done into Java EE uh, in the past. There's code in production, and there's a workforce that uh, knows how to code with Java EE. And once you have uh, code in production, uh, you should, of course, uh, consider properly if it's better for you to uh, re-implement things from scratch or to reuse a uh, substantial part of what you have. Um, how can Java EE fit in? Java EE is actually a monolith by definition, because uh, to pass the EE certification, uh, Java EE application server has to package all the APIs. Well, you may say that uh, there's the web profile, which allows uh, to, to, to package a smaller part of the, of the API, APIs, but uh, most of traditional uh, EE servers uh, deliver just one package that tends to be quite 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 large in term, terms of disk disk space. It's typically a few hundred uh, of megabytes. Some of them are slow to boot and require a lot of uh, memory, uh, which is not the case of Whitefly uh, in the last two uh, uh, points. 
So not every application needs all those uh, APIs, and that's exactly the mission of uh, Wildfly Swarm. Uh, it's an open source project uh, sponsored by Red Hat, and uh, it uh, attempts to decomposition Wildfly uh, into smaller slices that can be used uh, not independently, but uh, that can be packaged together in such a way that an application bl brings uh, with it only the parts uh, it needs. Uh, it's very important uh, to know uh, that uh, the way to distribute Wildfly Swarm applications uh, is a uh, Uber jar a self-contained uh, jar that contains your application, the parts of uh, the Wildfly runtime that are necessary to run your application, an internal Maven repository with uh, dependencies your application requires, and a piece of bootstrap code. There's also a related concept of hollow Uber jar. It's like UberJar, but uh, it doesn't contain any application code. And this might come in handy if you work with layering uh, uh, in, in containers. You may decide to uh, create a layer that contains uh, the UberJar with all parts that are needed to run your application and to place your application on top of it uh, into the next layer. This may reduce uh, the provisioning overhead and boot time. And this is actually also how Swarm implements MicroProfile. <coughs> MicroProfile, by the way, is, is an attempt to address this um, microservice uh, use cases, and at the moment uh, it contains JAXRS, JAXB, uh, JAXB and um, uh, CDI. To, for an application to require uh, some part of uh, mm, the Wildfly runtime or whatever capability, it is necessary to have uh, some notion that uh, covers this, this, this uh, capabilities and, and parts of functionality. Uh, this is called fractions uh, in the speak of Wildfly Swarm. They are, uh, you can think of them as uh, Maven, Maven artifacts, but it, they are not only um, Maven artifacts because they provide uh, a nice unified way uh, how they can be configured. Uh, some of them map to Wildfly subsystems, uh, think uh, Java EE uh, specifications, APIs, and some of, some of them bring uh, external code, such as uh, Jolokia, Netflix, Freebun, Swagger, and so on. The complete list of fractions uh, is over there on the Wildfly Swarm uh, web page. Now, uh, a short demo with uh, a traditional Java EE application. This is a standard example uh, from Aaron Gupta. I have uh, cloned it uh, into my work workspace. Uh, as typical for Java EE application, it's packaging. Uh, oh, I should uh, unify the output. Sorry. Okay. So its packaging is warm. I hope you can read the text. Yes, it's big enough, is it? <coughs> and its sole dependency is Java E API. When we build it, the result is a war, and uh, to deploy it, <coughs> We start Wildfly, as you can see, it starts quite fast. And uh, we can deploy it with 
Svartfly Maven plugin like this. So deploy it uh, to see what it does. It's very simple. It's jump some JSP page and uh, REST endpoint that returns some list of names. <coughs> so to swarmify this one, we need to take Wildfly Swarm plugin, place it uh, into the pom. Save. Build again. And look what's there. One of the things is the fat jar that ends with minus swarm. And to run it, uh, we just Java jar the Target whatever swarm jar. So the default um, um, context application context on on uh, Wildfly Swarm is the root context. So we have to remove this one and see that it works that easy you just add the plugin uh, package and you are done so uh, where are the fractions we have added just a plugin and the answer is that the plugin is able to auto detect uh, the fractions for you based on uh, the Java code and your dependencies. In some cases, you may want to um, define the fractions yourself manually in the POM file. Uh, this is what it looks like. Uh, you best um, import the BOM uh, that manages the versions, and then you can u use, the, use the fractions. <coughs> Um, when you are not migrating and all the uh, EE applications, uh, you may find this uh, generator handy uh, that allows you to um, to prepare a stub for your project. Uh, here at the top, you just uh, put your group ID, artifact ID of your uh, project, and uh, here at the bottom. You can choose the fractions uh, from the list, uh, uh, and you can see there the status of the given fraction. Some of them are stable, some of them are experimental. Good. Uh, let's go through a few comparison uh, comparisons between traditional Wildfly and Wildfly Swarm. In terms of disk space, uh, a freshly built uh, Wildfly Master zip is around 150 megabytes. Unzipped, it is 177. When you have just a plain servlet uh, in your Wildfly Swarm, Swarm Uberjar, it's only 36 megabytes, uh, and you see uh, father figures over there. So a small uh, REST endpoint with CDI and JPA requires 100 megabytes. Provisioning. The differences are quite obvious. With Wildfly, uh, you need to copy the zip, unzip, uh, boot, configure the data sources and whatever you need, uh, messaging queues, and then you can deploy the application. With Wildfly Swarm, you just copy the fed jar and run it. Uh, it's not true that Wildfly Swarm is just another way of packaging Wildfly because there were uh, 
deliberate decisions done not to include some kinds of functionalities. For example, uh, what platform will not run uh, with a security manager. Uh, you will not be able to deploy ears. Um, there's no clustering there because it's not really compatible with the mindset behind microservices. Um, there's no session replication, domain management, uh, distributed caches with uh, infinite span and so on. Uh, and you will not be able to build a distributed messaging broker out of what last form uh, instances. This is still open for contributions from community if somebody finds it uh, important enough. Uh, configuration. Um, Butterfly Swarm uh, allows uh, a nice Java API to uh, hard code configuration into your into your uh, Fed jar. Um, if you look at this, and uh, especially if you know uh, the configuration model of, of Wildfly and JBoss EAP, you will find it uh, very familiar. Actually, the fractions uh, that uh, map to Java EE uh, APIs are automatically uh, generated out of uh, the management model, <coughs> management meta model of uh, Wildfly. So everything you can do uh, over a Wildfly management interface uh, can be done also here like this uh, directly with the Fluent Java uh, API. <coughs> um, when we work with continuous integration and de delivery, uh, there's a concept of stages. Each project uh, goes over stages from de uh, development through test and whatever other stages uh, you decide to have to production. Uh, these stages may require uh, a bit different settings uh, and this uh, project defaults YAML file is there for you uh, at one hand to provide the defaults and uh, on the other hand to provide uh, different values for the individual stages. <coughs> to specify uh, a specific stage you will run with uh, minus s. Uh, when you are mi migrating from a traditional Wildfly uh, deployment, you probably have a standalone XML file uh, at your hand. And with Wildfly Swarm, you can reuse uh, that file. You can either specify it on command line, or you can uh, package it uh, into your uh, Uber jar. You should ensure that uh, you have all subsystems uh, in place that you try to configure uh, in the standalone XML uh, because uh, with standalone XML the Wildfly Swarm plugin isn't able to auto detect everything you have uh, in your standalone XML because it simply doesn't look into it. <coughs> and the highest level of the configuration uh, are the command line arguments. Uh, there's a few of them, uh, like bind to interface, um, select the profile, um, and a few others, and uh, system properties. System properties are quite powerful. Uh, they may, uh, they can override everything you say, uh, you, you set in the defaults uh, YAML file, or through the uh, Java Java um, API. Uh, there's a full reference uh, of the properties over there uh, on the Wildfly Swarm uh, web page. So now we come uh, to the advanced topics. What's the time? Okay, I think I'll break the outputs again.
who of you knows Keycloak? <clears throat> ah, very nice. Keycloak um, is a JBoss community project too. Uh, it provides a single sign-on server and uh, identity broker. Uh, it provides uh, all those uh, security-related things that are hard to implement correctly and uh, that are uh, very prone to security issues such as SAML, OAuth, OpenID, various social logins, uh, LDAP and Active Directory uh, integration. Uh, so to uh, secure um, either UI or uh, REST endpoint uh, with Keycloak, uh, you just need to put uh, this Keycloak uh, fraction into your POM XML. Uh, there's a few settings uh, you need to do either through the default YAML file or Java API, uh, such as you need to uh, select the Keycloak authentication method uh, and tell Keycloak which parts of the application uh, needs to be uh, secured. There's also a Keycloak JSON file uh, where you actually specify which uh, which Keycloak uh, host uh, should your application speak to. Another topic is uh, service registration. Uh, in a cloud and uh, microservices environment where the instances of microservices <coughs> are being created and uh, destroyed uh, very fast, uh, it's not very useful to rely on IP addresses and uh, host names. Uh, that's exactly the mission of uh, service uh, registries. Your application, uh, your, uh, your instance of a microservice is supposed to register itself under a certain name in the registry so that uh, it's dependent uh, services are able to find the IP addresses and hosts through the name uh, under which the service uh, services uh, service instances are running and are ready to respond uh, respond to the requests um, so consul is just one uh, implementation of a service registry that uh, Wildflies form uh, provides out of the box. Um, to use it, you actually don't need that piece of uh, Java code. Uh, this is just showing what it does uh, by default. Uh, the name of the application is equal the the name of the service under which your uh, application is uh, advertised. Uh, is equal to the uh, artifact ID in the POM file. Uh, this comes from example, this is called Ribbon Console on the uh, under Wildfly Swarm uh, GitHub organization. Uh, further, there's uh, Net Netflix Ribbon, um, uh, which may be used to to do the uh, the inversive part of service registration, uh, which means service discovery. Uh, you either use Netflix Ribbon or you can use a console client uh, manually or directly in your Java code. Netflix Ribbon does a lot of other things uh, in addition to service discovery. It's uh, a general purpose uh, inter-process communication library for uh, REST uh, microservices. It provides uh, cl client-side load balancing to other services uh, and it uh, um, offers several implementations such as round robin, response time weighted uh, or random. Um, as I said, there's in integration uh, with uh, several service registries and there's a built-in uh, support for uh, failure <coughs> uh, resilience uh, via Hystrix. Uh, 
uh, to use Netflix ribbon, you add the the usual uh, ribbon um, fraction to your poem, and uh, to create a proxy or an ad hoc uh, client that communicates through all the complicated uh, ribbon logic, <coughs> you create uh, an interface with a resource group uh, annotation that references <coughs> the name of your uh, the name uh, under which you have registered your microservice, and the lookup is done by console fraction under the hood. <coughs> Uh, at the bottom, you can see how to how to instantiate that. Uh, you can do it via uh, ribbon firm, and it uh, creates an instance of your interface uh, dynamically. <coughs> okay, Swagger. As usual. You add the fraction. Uh, you configure it either via Java FBI or whatever other option you have, like um, a system property or a YAML file. And once you have it, uh, this is what you get uh, when you request the Swagger JSON. <coughs> That's basically it. A small recap, uh, Wildfly, Wildfly Swarm uh, is just enough application server that packages uh, just the parts of uh, traditional Java EE server into an Uber jar or into a hollow Uber jar. There's a notion of fractions to specify and configure capabilities. <coughs> And uh, there's a uh, Wildfly Swarm plugin and uh, plugins for Maven and Gradle. Uh, to keep in touch, you, uh, you have several ways. You can read documentation, uh, visit examples, ask questions on the forum or IR IRC channels, uh, post issues, or uh, there's uh, Twitter handle where you can follow. Thank you very much. Are there any questions? No questions. Thanks. <laughs>